One of the most annoying but crazy true cliches that people in Colorado like to throw around is, well, if you don't like the weather here, just wait 15 minutes and it'll change. Well, the same can be true about the future of your NFL franchise. If you don't like the national narrative about the Denver Broncos, just wait a hot second and it will change. We saw tons of news across the NFL today that truly is changing the narrative around the Denver Broncos will never get out of this dead cap hit from Russell Wilson. This will set this team back five years. Well, All of that is changing and changing very quickly. Uh, We also got news today about who the Denver Broncos will not face on opening week of the NFL schedule this year and more great Bo Nix news. Let's dive into the big news of the day. Uh, And the news of the day is uh, we're seeing a couple things here that are just great, great signs for the Denver Broncos about the future of this franchise is that we get to play against the Los Angeles Chargers twice a year, who we beat when they had tons of offensive talent. They have just flushed that talent down the toilet and not replaced uh, Justin Herbert's favorite target, not replaced it with a franchise running back, a secondary receiver. The list goes on and on. So we get to play them twice a year, one of them being a home game. The other team we get to play twice a year, and we have a huge losing streak, I believe that ends this year, is the Las Vegas Raiders. I always still mess that up. And uh, Chris Sims, who's just been a pretty accurate prognosticator and knows the quarterback position very, very well, uh, came out and he is each each week an episode of this show he does with Peter King. He drops the next four quarterbacks and he is ranking the top 40 quarterbacks in the NFL. So his 40th ranked quarterback is Jarrett Stidham, who is our backup at best, and he might even be our third string quarterback, depending on what ends up shaking out at camp with him and Zach Wilson. The interesting thing to me was to see that the 39th quarterback on his list is the quarterback we get to play twice a year in the Vegas Raiders. And so this is fantastic news that uh, the 39th ranked quarterback is barely above our second or probably third string quarterback in Jarrett Stidham. Uh, And if you take a look at how Chris Sims ranked quarterbacks going into this, it kind of shows us where he might place Bo Nick. So he ranked all of the rookie quarterbacks coming into this. And he said, Caleb Williams is in a class of his own. Uh, And then he had his next tier is like, Hey, this would be a, the number one pick in any other year of the draft. And he had Jaden Daniels there. And then his third string were, these are franchise starting quarterbacks. So a franchise starting quarterback has to be way outside of that top 40, probably closer to the top 20. And look who he has right here is our quarterback of the future, Bo Nix. We're just hearing amazing reports about his command of this offense. Um, The media members who got to watch just said they were blown away that he would uh, the Broncos are one of the only teams that during rookie minicamp actually run a full on practice. Most teams do uh, maybe positional drills, one-on-ones. They might do film work. We actually ran a full practice, and they said they couldn't believe Bo Nix breaking the huddle and not needing to, like, communicate with receivers, but truly being a field general and directing people around the field. That is because he's what Sean Payton thought he was getting, which is a cerebral coach's son who's going to step in and have command of that offense immediately. And the other fantastic news of that is that we are getting Bo Nix at a absolute fraction of the cost of his actual production and what it's going to be this year. He was uh, the first quarterback who signed out of this draft class because he's not wanting to nickel and dime anything. He knows that this money is just chump change. And if he does his job for the next five years on this rookie deal, that he is going to be in line for some mega, mega bucks. And so what we saw today is the Detroit Lions had to throw the bag at Jared Goff. Now, Jared Goff famously being the quarterback that Sean McVay and the Rams moved away from and went on to win a Super Bowl. Uh, He handed us our lunch this year uh, on that game, that really rough game going to Detroit, and you saw that he could do a couple things very well. I think Jared Goff's arm strength and Bo Nix, very, very similar. Their skill in the pocket, I think is going to be incredibly similar, but the main difference is that Jarrett Goff has zero mobility. Uh, he is not quick. He, he is somewhat like a, a Peyton Manning in the pocket in that he's going to make a couple moves, but he is not mobile. He doesn't throw well off platform and all of that, like Bo Nix is a step above him. So to be having Jarrett Goff Uh, being the second highest quarterback, you're looking at $53 million a year for Jared Goff, obviously Burrow 55 and he deserves all of that. 
Uh, Dak Prescott's about to get the bag. We got Trevor Lawrence up for a deal. Tua Tagovailoa's up for a deal. Um, several quarterbacks are coming up, and they're going to just keep setting the bar higher and higher. And for the next five years, we have Bo Nix locked down, and his deal, uh, he has an $18 million four-year deal. Uh, with a $10 million signing bonus, which is another nice part about playing for the richest owner in sports, which spreads the cap hit over the four years. So we're paying him like, what, four and $4.65 million a year. And so you look that our quarterback room for the next five years, we're not, uh, the bag is not being emptied on the quarterback position, which will open us up to do other things. And the other thing that we're going to see is that we saw a massive jump in the salary cap this year that no one really saw coming. And all of that was because everyone and their mom loved YouTube TV and they didn't want to dish on their their house to pay for NFL Sunday ticket when it was with DirecTV. But now that it was in YouTube TV and you could do the amazing quad box and it was quick streaming and you could be you know, at the playground with your kids and watching on your phone, it was an incredible experience. And so many people in my life who've never had NFL Sunday ticket got it because it was easy and it was with you wherever you were. So I see that number is just going to continue to rise and that money then goes into a higher salary cap. We saw last year, remember, everyone was like uh, asking to borrow friends Peacock's accounts or downloading it for a night and getting it so they could stream a game. And now Netflix is coming out and they're going to stream the, the games on Christmas day, which is brand new revenue source for the NFL. They already have their TV contracts locked in for those other games. And this is just money on top of money. In addition to hearing rumors about a potential 18 game season, uh, somewhat down the line. And, and we bit off the bulk of <clears throat> the Russell Wilson dead cap space. We hit that this year and we improved in every single position, and the only question mark we have is, is Jonas Griffith going to stay healthy at that, that linebacker position, stepping in for uh, Josie Jewell? It, that's a, a loss. And how is Alex Forsyth going to step in for Lloyd Cushenberry? But from all of those people who 15 minutes ago were saying the Broncos are set back for a decade because of this Russell Wilson deal, it's just simply not true that even Sports Illustrated is coming out and saying, hey, we're going to have a clean slate next year in 2025. And our franchise quarterback, who we're seeing multiple people just say, hey, Bo Nix is the dude, uh, we're paying him like $5 million a year for the next five years. So we are in fantastic shape that we essentially get to pay him Brock Purdy type money, which is why the 49ers could do what they did. That even though they had a swing and a miss on Trey Lance, they recovered with Brock Purdy. We're doing the exact same thing with Bo Nix. We swung and we missed with Russell Wilson. And now we have a cap, uh, a great cap situation because of what Bo Nix is playing, uh, which is going to free up money. Like we can lock in Sertan and make him uh, one of the highest paid defensive backs in the NFL and still be okay. And our cap hit is going to be in a much better situation because the Walton Penner group can front load this with a fantastic signing bonus, which then will spread out and make the cap hit smaller than uh, we just saw Antoine Winfield Jr. broke the bag and he is the highest paid player right now. I envision even maybe this off season, <clears throat> we still have a little cap room. You could see us locking down certain this off season even. So that will be a very interesting development. Uh, last thing uh, we're just seeing is that it's not just Des Bryant, RG three, Bill Belichick, Sean Payton, all these people lifting up Bo Nix and, and trying to make him someone that he's not, it's his actual teammates. And so great article here on the DNVR by Zach Stevens, just talking about all of the rookies and the way they're looking up to him. And, um, I listened to D Max podcast today where he and Chad Brown broke down the locker room scrum with Bo Nix after rookie minicamp. And they were like, this guy could teach a college class on how to talk to the media. So every single challenge before him, whether it's the pre-draft process, whether it's his first rookie camp, his first time addressing the media, he's checking off all of these boxes and his own teammates, uh, even Vele, who's older than him. He, I think he's 26 years old because he went on uh, a mission with his church b between uh, before he started college at Utah, even comes out and says, we all are looking up to him. And, 
when you're six four and a wide receiver who's twenty six years old to look up to a guy who's younger than you and much smaller than you really bodes well for what we have in our franchise quarterback that we get to pay five million dollars to instead of what the Lions have to pay Jared Goff for a lot of years. Uh other news of the day that we hear is that we heard all about uh we got two big um news drops about who's going to open the NFL season. We heard that the Kansas City Chiefs, we knew they were playing week one, but we didn't hear their opponent until today. We get the full schedule release on Wednesday night. Don't miss it. Be right here with me and some friends. Uh, Wednesday night is going to be amazing, so make sure you're here. But Kansas City Chiefs are not playing the Denver Broncos. They are playing the Baltimore Ravens, so that means we do not open up with the Chiefs or the Ravens. And the other thing that we heard is we heard who Tom Brady is going to be calling his first game, and that is going to be the Dallas Cowboys, who is not on our schedule, against the Cleveland Browns. So that is still leaving my ideal schedule and how I would love to open this whole thing up, leaves that wide open on the table. We still could open up at home with the Atlanta Falcons, but we will catch that on Wednesday and see see what happens there. But uh, thank you all for the love, and Broncos country, giddy up. Ah, just kiss the rim.